Good morning, folks. Gorgeous shot of umbral magnetic fields arching above the sunspot group departing the Earth-facing view on the south. Today, we've got a touch of space weather, a big-time review of the pole shift, the magnetic field, the LLSVPs, volcanoes, and more. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun mostly quiet. Those bottom-right fields we saw to open could erupt today, but that would not be fired at Earth. Right now, the only space weather story is in the solar wind, the enhancement overnight. Continued minor plasma streams from the last week's activity, causing geomagnetic unrest sustained at KP4, providing a slowly onsetting increase in solar wind pressure that is providing only minor geoelectric perturbations. Peak events so far is only middle of the road, still a bit more than expected from such minor space weather. We're also watching the plasma filaments facing Earth. Thin, snake-like ropes are on eruption watch as well as that departing southern active region. Real quick, if you missed our video last night, it was a short update on lightning and human psychological effects during the ongoing Earth changes, the pole shift. Don't want to miss that one, and we slide right into the geodynamic story with one on the LLSVPs, the core plumes reaching high into the mantle. It's an excellent review of the problems in the models, how paleomagnetic studies don't match models of mantle behavior, another sign that their models are not the rigid cement blocks they were thought to be. And in that same vein, we have seen numerous new models attempt to explain the rapid excursions and repetition over time. They are still not yet at any model that accurately satisfies the observational reality. But speaking of repetition over time, there have been only scant records of the reliable cycle of geomagnetism over the last three million years, with a ton of fill-in-the-blanks before that. Here, we find the pole shifts have indeed been a persistent feature on this planet, back to 50 million years, and as a nod to the ongoing shift, the geomagnetic minima only follow the reversals, no weak points in between, so the modern weakening of the field complements the already shifting magnetic poles to tell us this is no anomaly, this is it. And last but not least, this might be the coolest thing they've ever found about a previous pole shift. They found an area that caught both the shift and the post-reversal shift in the magnetic record for Lechamp. And here's what that means. Think about the modern shift. We know both the north and south magnetic poles are moving. The north is moving faster, but the south is further ahead in the race and has recently begun speeding up. They're set to meet in the Northeast Indian Ocean in the 2030s or 2040s, and from there, the poles will reorient with either one going to the other side of the world or their reorientation back to the poles if this was a 6,000-year minor in-between half event. That means that while the shift is taking place, like right now, areas that get passed by the pole will show a reversal in magnetic character, and they will have a chance to record another one as the poles reorient themselves. This is why there are so many variable dates to these events. On top of the trouble with precise isotope dating, the position of the poles, their shift, and their reorientation afterwards are going to produce slightly different signatures at a sliding scale of time over the duration of the event, and it's going to be different at every single point on the globe. We greatly appreciate your support. You can learn more about everything I just said. Get our books at otf.cells.com and pre-order the upcoming school year supplement. This will be the first time you guys get it before the university libraries do. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.